I played Tragic Air against the main deck of Green White Tokens uh, last weekend. I really liked it, and I think it's going to pay off for Osa, particularly in this matchup. So let's get this match going. Here we are, round one of the StarCityGames.com Standard Open in Baltimore, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. Osip is going to start off with a tapped Canopy Vista past the turn to David, who's going to deploy a Plains and a Dragon Hunter. So this is the kind of start that he needs. He wants to play you know, something, or something along the lines of three spells by turn two to try and stay, stay in it with this tokens, tokens list. Yeah, and it's pretty great that Osip is able to be on the draw here. Uh, David having to burn a removal spell on turn two rather than deploy more threats is a pretty big deal. David, if David had been on the play, uh, we could have seen a similar board save, except David would have two more creatures potentially pushing in for damage. So Osip does have a Sylvan Advocate on turn two along with a Forest. David is going to use Declaration of Stone to take care of it and knock Osip down to 18. Osip will cash in that clue and draw a card. Just has a land and a pass. David's going to get in for two more points of damage here on his third turn with that Dragon Hunter. That's going to drop Osip down to 16. Here we have a Thraben Inspector. It's going to bring along a clue with it and another one drop. So here we have that triple one drop. Could have potentially been on the battlefield on turn two. It's very fortunate for Osip that he was on the play. Yeah, and uh, David has a, a decent start. It's not the the fastest. Uh, here, David re would really like some sort of uh, emblem effect or maybe another Declaration of Stone for this token. But uh, all Osip wants to do is just kind of tread water until he can flip an Avacyn or land a Tragic Arrogance. So Osip does have a fourth land for his turn and a Gideon ally of Zendikar. That's going to bring along with it a 2-2 Knight ally token. And on David's turn, it looks like we have a three-man enchantment. That is an always watching. So this is going to give plus one, plus one to all of his non-token creatures and give them vigilance. So this will make all of his creatures big enough to at least trade with that knight token. And if he sends them all at Gideon, Osip can trade off a token and let it die. But it looks like it's all going towards Os uh, they're all going towards Gideon, and he's just going to let it die since it would die anyways and keep his 2-2 two -two knight ally token around. Yeah, it's definitely one of the, the unfortunate, or a little unfortunate for David. He'd really like to push some damage this turn. David hitting his, or Osip hitting his fifth land drop, still being at 16 life, it's kind of a big deal. And uh, this is the point in the game where Osip is going to start getting control because he's going to be able to leverage some big, powerful spells. Yeah, one card that he has to, that David has to be wary of here is Archangel Avacyn. He does have some copies of Stasis Snare in his sideboard, but David does not have any instant speed way to answer an Archangel Avacyn. So there's a very real possibility of it uh, entering the battlefield, sticking around, and then flipping shortly thereafter. Yeah, Osip probably has a couple different options. I haven't gotten a crystal clear view of his hand, but he could cast uh, potentially cast two spells this turn to help catch up on tempo. He could play another Planeswalker, which would be a little easier to protect because he still has this Knight token sitting around. And it's likely just to soak up damage uh, and preserve Osip's life total while he just buys time. And if he has a Dramokas command, it could be a really big blowout because he could potentially uh, you know, put a plus one, plus one counter on one of his guys, make David sacrifice his always watching and uh, potentially build up to a pretty big blowout inside of combat. Well, Osip does have a copy of Nissa Voice of Zendikar. That's going to go up to four and bring along with it an O1 plant token. He does have two men available here, so he's deciding whether or not he wants to cast another spell, uh, try and hold up mana for a Dramokas command. Let's just see how exactly he wants to play out the rest of this turn. Yeah, once we get to the point where Osip gets five mana, there's always going to be a lot of options, especially on turn five, because he still has a lot of cards in hand, because he frequently have the option to either play something really big or cast two spells in the same turn. And it looks like we've got a Jamoka's Command. It's like we do have a Jamoka's Command. So he's going to choose the two modes to make David sacrifice a creature, and then the 2-2 two -two Knight ally is going to fight the Thraben Inspector. It's really important to know that the modes on Dramoka's command all happen in order, so David Wiggs does have to sacrifice that enchantment before the fight happens, which makes the Thraben Inspector a 1-2 when the fight resolves, and the Knight Ally is going to be able to kill the Thraben Inspector off. Yeah, and the nicest thing about this is now there's no way David can push any damage onto Nissa without a Griff Spoon or a removal spell. Osip has two access to two, two blockers, and even if David were to deploy another always watching, at least the knight would be able to trade with one of David's creatures. So uh, Osip also had the option to just 
put a plus one plus one counter on his guy and make David sacrifice his, that enchantment and do it inside of combat. Uh, but that would mean that Nissa would potentially take some damage. It also is a little risky in the face of another copy of Always Watching. Yeah. So it looks like both creatures are going to attack. Like, so very likely they are going at Nissa. Osip is going to decide how he wants to block. Now, if we think about this Knight Token in terms of card advantage, the fact that uh, this Knight Token can potentially trade with one of these creatures, uh, you know, it's, it's not quite a two for one because the Gideon basically got attacked to death for free. Gideon in this game was gain, gain seven life or whatever it was, uh, maybe eight, and kill a two one. So effectively, that's what Gideon was this game. That's kind of all Osip wants. It's just a nice one for one and a buffer his life total, though. And then I gave him a body to use, utilize that Dromokus command to take care of the three minutes vector. So yep. that Night Token did get all of its mileage, but it is going to be traded off against the Expedition Envoy. And David is going to reload with a Hanware Militia Captain and a copy of Kithion, Hero of Iroas, of Hero of Akros. And this game uh, might have been quite different if David was on the play, but we can see the green-white tokens deck executing its normal game plan where it keeps its life total fa uh, safe because the opponent needs to attack the planeswalkers and meanwhile green white tokens is just clogging up the board and just building itself up to enter the the mid game and late game safely so heading into osip's sixth turn it's quite a few options is once you get into the mid to late game with this green white tokens deck especially if you're hitting your land drops. You have a lot of powerful cards. Yeah. This is the bread and butter of this tokens deck. This is where it wants to be every time. Yep. Always good to read the cards, even when you know what they do. It's worth double checking. Also double check what's on the back. Yep. Osip is uh, quite the experienced player. Me and him actually uh, teamed together for Pro Tour Dublin, and he was one of the my favorite teammates that I've ever had. He's like really, really fun to play test with. He's also just a really smart, funny guy. All right, well here we have another another copy of Gideon, ally of Zendikar for Osip. He's going to just use the zero and make a 2-2 night ally. He's going to plus his Nissa voice of Zendikar and make another zero one plant token and just pass the turn back to David. And one of the best cards for David would probably just be a Griff Spoon. He wants a way to attack these Planeswalkers without having to send all of his creatures at the same uh, Planeswalker. Griff Spoon would also give him a way to get around the tokens that are starting to clog up the board. Also, if David has a copy of Declaration in Stone, he can clear out those plant tokens and take down one of these Planeswalkers. Yeah. He's still not making any headway on Osip's life total, though. And if he's paying a card in order to clear the way to kill a Planeswalker, he's basically just one for wanting the Planeswalker, while the Planeswalker is still absorbing a lot of damage. So it so looks like David is going to use a Declaration Stone on the 2-2 Knight ally token. Now he's going to send in all of his creatures. This is going to trigger the transform on Kithion at the end of combat. We'll go ahead and get a confirmation of where all of those creatures are heading. Yeah, and what's nice about this play is if he had targeted the plants, he uh, could have potentially killed the Nissa, but he would have had to trade one of his creatures away, likely the Kithion, uh, whereas this way he's basically going to be able to flip his Kithion. Looks like they're all going towards Gideon. Right, so Gideon is going to take two damage. Both of Osip's plants are going to die. We're going to get a transform on Kithion into a Gideon Battleforged. We'll start with three loyalty counters. Let's see what he decides to do with his Gideon. So I, if I were him, I would probably use the plus one on one of his creatures so that uh, there's no way his opponent's Gideon can kill. The uh, other Gideon? Yeah. Gideon cannot kill himself. Yep. And you can see him looking at the Gideon now to see how much he can attack for. One mana for this Gideon Battleforged is quite the deal. It makes you do a little bit of work to flip it, but this white-red humans deck flips it like no other. It just has so many one-drops. It can easily deploy three creatures uh, by turn turn two. Yeah. And uh, one mana for, 
for a Planeswalker that can attack for four. It's just a bargain. Yeah, so Gideon is going to plus one on the Militia Captain. Uh, pass the turn back to Osip. Osip's going to go into his seventh turn here. Let's see if he has some kind of action. What's also nice about this is it insulates David against sweepers. So if he's up against a Languish deck or a Planar Outburst deck, uh, his Gideon would be able to survive. And in particular in this case, because uh, Osip has access to Tragic Arrogance, um, you know, it'll help insulate him against that too. Uh, Os if Osip did have Tragic Arrogance, he could make it so the Hanwari Militia Captain gets sacrificed. Osip could keep his Gideon and just attack the other uh, David's Gideon down. Mm -hmm. but, that, but then Osip is going to end up losing one of his Planeswalkers well, along with the Tragic Arrogance. One thing that would be a nice play, though, is if he just made his oh, Gideon a into a creature first, then cast Tragic, er tragic Arrogance, and this here. is what we see here. This is a great play. So Osip is going to make his Gideon a creature. He's going to allow himself to keep a creature Gideon and a Planeswalker and Nyssa Voice of Zendikar. He's going to have David keep the Dragon Hunter and his Gideon, sacrifice the indestructible Hanwar Militia Captain, and then get in for five with his Gideon, kill David's Gideon. That's a lot of Gideons. Yeah. And make a, a little bit of a tongue twister. Turn. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is the power of tragic arrogance. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh,. Yeah, just a great card. I love this green-white tokens deck. And uh, you really get to see it flex its muscles. I mean, at this point, David is going to start to run out of gas. The power of his deck is going to be diminished. And he's going to have a hard time recovering here. Osip is going to be able to get a lot of value out of his Planeswalkers. And he's also got powerful spells uh, that he's going to be able to cast as well. David is going to try and rebuild with a copy of Always Watching. He's going to send in his Dragon Hunter, but Osip is just going to chump block with his 0-1 plant token. He's going to plus one his Gideon again, and we're going to start trying to turn the corner here. Attacking for five. Five five indestructible is pretty big body. Yep. Nis is going to plus one again, make another 0-1 plant token. And Osip is going to pass the turn back without a play. Now, if I'm David here, this just screams Archangel Avison. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the first turn that Green White Tokens passes with all of its mana open, you know for that first turn it's not because they're flooding out. All right, well, here we have an Archangel Avacyn. That is going to block the Dragon Hunter, and while she may be flying with wings, she is not a dragon, so that's going to eat the Dragon Hunter in combat. Here's a Declaration in Stone during his second main phase for David. That's going to take care of the Archangel Avacyn, but unfortunately it will just give him a clue, and he has two mana available to just pop it here on David's end step after he plays a town gossip monger. Yeah, and this is a situation where you can really see uh, when Declaration of Stone is at its best and at its worst. Early in the game, when your opponent doesn't necessarily have time to crack the clues, White Red Humans r is really able to leverage the efficiency of Declaration of Stone. But now that we're entering the late game, it's really not that great of a removal spell. All right, Osip has a... Oath of Nissa on his turn. That's going to find him another copy of Gideon Voice or Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Let's see how he decides to play this turn now. And one thing that might be nice to do, since he has two Gideons, is just make an emblem with the current one, and then play the second one, and start spitting out three three night tokens. the The emblem is really powerful. It makes your plants have one power. Uh, it, it really does a lot of work, but it looks like Osip's just going to keep that Gideon in reserve. And we're going to charge it up to five, send in for five. That's going to knock David down to ten. Osip will tick his Nissa up to six and make another 0-1 plant token. Oh, and he has a Dramokas command, so he's going to put a plus one, plus one counter on his animated Gideon. It's going to fight off the town gossip monger, and David's going to say, you know what, I've had enough of this, let's pack it in. We're going to go on to some sideboarded games and see if I can pick things up here. So on, uh, let's take a look at the sideboards here. On, on Osip's side, we have two copies of Tireless Tracker, two Stasis Snare, one Clip Wings, one Aerial Volley, two Lamolt Pacifist, two Declaration of Stone, two Linval the Preserver, two Nissa Vastwood Seer, and one Quarantine Field. What do we think Osip is going to do here? So I think the things that we're going to see out of Osip are the Stasis Snare, just to have uh, access to some instant speed removal. Lamholt Pacifist end up, ends up being a great blocker in this situation. He could bring in Declaration of Stone. I personally wouldn't. I think he has enough good cards not to bring it. Um, 
but he might bring it in anyway. Two cards that I think he'll definitely bring in, though, that are going to excel in the matchup are Linvala and Nissa Vaswood Seer. All he wants to do is hit his land drops and then play some big, powerful spells, especially ones like Linvala that are going to buffer his life total and help lock up the air so that David uh, you know, can't win the game off the back of a card like Griff Spoon. Yeah, Linvala in particular seems very good against his human deck. Yep. Anytime you get to gain five life and make two flying blockers, it seems like you're in a pretty good spot. Oh, yeah. Now, on David's side, we have two Stasis Snare, one Silk Wrap, another copy of Griff's Boon, one Repel the Abominable, four Needle Spires, four Reckless Bushwhacker, and two Gideon Allies in the car. How do you think he's going to sideboard? So, I think because he's seen the Tragic Arrogance, he's going to bring in the Needle Spires and Bushwhacker uh, package. I think that uh, basically you, you want to bring those cards in every single time you're up against a Sweeper. Uh, Gideon Allies Ender Car might be a card he wants to bring in if he wants to be a little bit more resilient to Tragic Arrogance. It is a little slow, and it can be attacked by Osip, so he might not want to bring it. The other card he could consider is Stasis Snare, just having an instant speed way to kill Avacyn before she flips um, could also be something that's worthwhile. Um, do you remember what Repel the Abominable does? Repel the Abominable? Yeah. I think it's one of the new cards. Yeah, I, I believe it's uh, the Escalate card where you can untap creatures and make them indestructible, gain some life, or make them sacrifice. Sacrifice an attacking creature? Okay. I don't think he'll bring that in. But yeah. We will get a... Oh, oh no, it's oh, this that's card. The, that's the human one. Yeah, the human one. Prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by non-human sources. So, very powerful card. Uh, I don't know if he'll bring it. I would, I would really like to have that card against a deck with, like, red sweepers. Yeah. Uh... I could certainly see him bringing it in here. Um, it would be a good way to make it so that Avacyn doesn't sweep the board, but uh, it doesn't do a whole lot against Tragic Arrogance. Um, yeah. And the humans deck, or the, the Green White Tokens deck, it doesn't have any humans, so there's not going to be yet, like any friendly fire, so he might bring it in. It's a pretty sweet one of. Yeah, it's, it seems a little too narrow here, uh, but I do like the... I don't want to say it's an innovation because things like this have done before with this mm -hmm. deck, but the Needle Spires Bushwhacker in the sideboard. Like yeah. I, I am a big fan of playing lands in my sideboard <laughs> when I can. Um, and for those of you who are big fans of lands in general, I have good news for you. We have a weekly sale going on mm. at StarCityGames.com. So you can save on select full art basic lands. So when I first hear that, I think, oh, well, sweet, Battle for Zendikar lands, mm -hmm. the original Zendikar full art lands. But there are also unglued and unhinged. Yeah, we got all of the lands. There are foil versions of, of basic lands. So yep. if you like to have sweet lands in your deck, head on over to StarCityGames.com and check out our weekly sale. It does end Monday at 10.59 a.m. where you can save on select full art basic lands, both foil and non-foil. That's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Lands are where it's at. I mean, you have to have lands, right? I take, I take great pride in the basic lands that I play. Which basic lands do you use? I, I find that, that most people have like one specific set or type of basic lands that they use yeah. in all of their decks. So typically I try to use either Ice Age lands because that's when I first started playing, so there's a nostalgia factor, or I use the full art Zendikar uh, lands because that's when I really return to the game. Original Zendikar or Battle for Zendikar? Original Zendikar, yeah. I can get behind that. I used to use like Ice Age Mirage lands a mm -hmm. lot, um, but I always... It's completely irrational, but I always felt like they were thicker. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and so it just didn't feel right when I was yeah. shuffling with them. I know. So uh, I'm a big proponent of Portal and Portal 2 basics. Yeah, I know Mirage has a, a red, like, sunset mountain that I really, really like. Um, and, uh, yeah, Mirage was a sweet set. Mirage was a sweet set. I started playing shortly after Mirage. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> I still have stacks and stacks of like Tempest basics because mm -hmm. that was when I first started buying booster boxes. Mm -hmm. I made a really smart move. I, I, you know, played during Ice Age and I played for a number of years after that. But then when I decided to stop playing, I gave my entire collection to Ian and Reed Duke, which was perfect because they kept playing, developed a huge collection. And then when I returned to start playing the game, I had rights to basically borrow stuff from them whenever <laughs> I wanted. Nice. All right, well, it looks like for game two, David is going to be on the play, but he is going to go to go back and try and find a good six. Osip, a big old smile, looks like he's going to keep his opening mm -hmm. seven. Seems like he's got some good tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, well, he certainly brought a deck that is prepared to beat white-red humans. A lot of the green-white decks 
don't play Tragic Arrogance in the main. Um, a lot do, but a lot don't. I know that previously in the last season, I was anti Tragic Arrogance in the main just because I was worried about control decks. But in the current environment, it's almost all aggro decks. And having Tragic Arrogance in the main is just a phenomenal metagame call that's going to give you a much better win percentage against a deck like White Red Humans. So I'm actually really excited to see Osip here battling. Uh, he hasn't been playing on the SCG Tour as much as mm -hmm. of late. Yeah. Um, he's actually on the Hall of Fame ballot. Yeah, I've he is. I've seen some argue, arguments for and against him through mm -hmm. social media from people with votes. Uh, so good luck to Osip on that front. And the first time I ever did any commentary for SCG for the SCG Live was filling in for a round, and I got to cast with Osip. Oh, that's really it's, cool. It's pretty nice. So David's going to start off. Uh, he did keep his six. He's got a Kithion to lead off. Osip is going to play a Fortified Village, reveal the requisite basic land type, and cast an Oath of Nyssa. And look at his top three. He's going to consult with his hand to see what he needs to find here, either a land creature or a Planeswalker card. And there's going to be a basic forest. And if David can deploy two one-drops here, uh, he may be able to flip his Kithion before Osip can do anything about it. All right, well, David is going to attack with his Kithion, drop Osip down to 18. Looks like we've got a one drop, Dragon Hunter. And another one drop. So this is the ideal start for David. This certainly makes up for the fact that he mulliganed. And with his White Red Humans deck, frequently it can win without using all of its cards. So, And a Town Gossip Monker, his other one drop. So. Yeah, quite good. He even has the potential here to play an always watching on turn three, attack and transform that gossip monger. This could be this game could be over very quickly. Yeah. So last game we got to see Osip on the play and really have his way with the game state. Here we get to see David really leverage the power of the white red humans deck and really show you guys what its good starts look like. Well, he might not have always watching this turn, but Thali's lieutenant is going to come down and put a plus one plus one counter on all of his other humans. He is going to attack with all of his creatures. And Osip does have that 1-1 one, one hanger back walker there. But it's not going to be able to do much in the face of what we've got going on. Yeah, and if Osip had a Sylvan Advocate, it would be able to play a little bit of defense here. But hanger back walker being a 1-1 one, one is unable to do anything. So David is going to transform his Gideon. He could plus one here on that Gossip Monger. Yeah, and then flip it later. And then flip it later. Yeah. Although it looks like he's just going to plus two on the Hangerback Walker. Hmm. So that's uh, kind of an interesting play. I guess he just wants to make it so that the Hangerback can't block on the following turn, which is uh, kind of a sweet play also. It wasn't what my I thought of first to do with the Gideon, but it may prove to be quite good for him. All right, so Osip just has a forest for his turn. Let's see how he wants to develop his board here. What's nice about this play from David is he knows that there's no way this hanger back walker is actually going to be able to kill the Gideon. Uh, but having the hanger back walker on blocking duty uh, can be pretty bad. That said, if Osip has a Dromokus command, uh, things could get a little hairy inside of combat because Osip could potentially uh, level up his hangar back walker, plus one, plus one, fight it on the uh, the dragon hunter. Hangar back walker would die, get and three. then there'd be three Thopter tokens that would be able to play defense. Now Osip is down to 10, and that Gideon will be able to crash in for four points of damage. Yep. And it looks like Osip does have the Dromokus command. Looks like he is going to do the play that I suggested. And uh, there's a good chance that this would have happened no matter what. Uh, but by having it play out this way, it has to happen on... Uh, actually, I guess it doesn't even have to happen on Osip's turn. Osip could have waited until David's turn to do that. Um, David had something like a land and a declaration in stone here. That would be quite nice for him. But it looks like he's got plenty to attack with, as is. Yeah, so it looks like he has a copy of Town Gossip Monger and a Thalia's Lieutenant, or a Thalia, or a Three Minute Spectre. He is going to drop down to 18 from using, 17 from, or 18 from using that. 
Battlefield Forge. He's not going to do anything with the Gideon just yet. Um, he might have zeroed it to attack. I didn't see him tap on the card, but I assume that's probably what happened. Giving the Gideon more loyalty doesn't do a whole lot. And there would have to be some blocks because with the Gideon attacking, it would be a lethal attack. But yeah, since it's not tapped, I guess the Gideon isn't tapping. So one thing to note about this game is David just has a ton of stuff. This is where we get to see uh, the white-red humans deck leverage its tempo. Despite only having access to two lands, it has just been able to do a lot because it's predominantly one mana spells. Uh, Osip, meanwhile, has only really cast two effective spells this game, which is what most decks would only be able to do at this point. It won't be until turn five or so that Osip is able to actually start catching up in this game. And with Osip being at 10 life and not having a Planeswalker to soak up damage, David is in pretty good shape to, to win this game, but we'll have to see how it goes. And it doesn't look like Osip has any Planar Outburst. Yeah. Uh, so Tragic Arrogance is going to be his big catch-up card. And with David having that Gideon already transformed into a Planeswalker, there's a, a lot of risk of still leaving him with some good things once once that happens to resolve. So he is just going to plus two his Gideon. Osip is going to triple block the Thalia's Lieutenant to get it off of the battlefield, but we still have a Gossip, Mon or a a gossip Monger with a counter on it. We've got a Gossip Monger without a counter and a Ribbon Inspector. But Osip is going to use his fourth turn to Declaration and Stone both of the Gossip Mongers. That's going to give David two clue tokens, but also remove two attackers from the battlefield. Yeah. And he's going to play Sylvan Advocate. So he's he's trying to stabilize here. One thing that would have been a, an interesting play from David is if he had plus one on his Gossip Monger, untapping it, because that, then he could tap it and flip it in response to the Declaration of Stone. And uh, he wouldn't have had two things get Declaration and Stone then. It would only yeah. be one. That is a good point. Even still, Osip is on the ropes. David has a, doesn't have much mana, but he does have some redraws. So David is unlikely to run out of gas anytime soon, but we'll have to see if Osip can just play more powerful stuff that David can't really deal with. Well, David did animate his Gideon, crashed in for four. That's going to knock Osip down to four. But now he's going into his fifth turn here, and this is the point where he can start casting two spells or some big powerful spells and try and catch up. Yeah. It's going to be tricky, though, because that Gideon is pretty hard for Osip to actually deal with. Uh, the best thing he could do is have, like, two Dramokas commands, because uh, then he could eat both creatures and, uh, you know, start pressuring David's Gideon with his 4 or 5 Sylvan Advocate. Um, well, here and we the Sylvan have Advocate would be able to block, but Osip probably is going to have to block this Gideon for the rest of the game. Here we have a Nissa Vastwood Seer. That's going to go and find a forest for Osip uh, to play. This is going to put him one step closer to making that Sylvan Advocate a 4-5, which is a pretty good blocker for that Gideon. Yeah. He's going to have to wait another turn, though, before he can make it a 4-5. So this Nissa is likely going to be on chump blocking duty. Uh, well, Osip is going to attack Gideon with the Sylvan Advocate. And if Osip has a, has a, uh, a Dramokas command, he could play it now, or he could save it for a potential always watching and cast it inside of combat. The nice thing about casting Dramokas command on Osip's turn is then the Sylvan Advocate gets to fight a creature, and then it doesn't have any damage on it inside of combat during David's attack step. Whereas now if Osip wants to fight a creature, uh, the Sylvan Advocate is going to have a lot more damage on it in one turn and uh, could potentially die. All right, well, David is going to activate his Gideon and then play a Thalia's Lieutenant here. This is going to enter the battlefield and put a plus one, plus one counter on each other human that he controls. And this is where things get a little tricky with that Dramokas command because uh, if Osip wants to use the Dramokas command now in response to the trigger, he can... Let's say he fights the hand warrior militia captain. Uh, the Sylvan Advocate will be a 4-3, but it'll have two damage on it. And then that um, Thraben Inspector will get a plus one, plus one counter and be able to attack into the Sylvan Advocate. 
Whereas if Ophisip had played it on the previous turn, uh, that would not be the case because the Sylvan Advocate wouldn't have any damage on it going into combat. All right, so the Gideon, the Inspector, and the Militia Captain, Captain are all going to get a plus one, plus one counter from Thalia's Lieutenant, and David's just going to attack with all of his attackable creatures. Let's see how Os Osip wants to block here. Looks like we're thinking about Nissa on Gideon. And here, I think probably the mode that I would use is just put a plus one, plus one counter on the Sylvan Advocate and have Nissa fight the, uh, the Thalia's Lieutenant. It would mean that Osip goes down to two, but if he has a land, he might be in good shape to stabilize. Land Linvala would be real nice next oh, turn for, yeah. <laughs> for Osip. You yep. want gain, gain life, get two blockers, have a 5-5 five, five that could block Gideon, and have a 4-5 that can actually pressure David yeah. and still stay on defense. But that is Magical Christmas Land, so we are just going to... Yes, he's going to put a counter on Sylvan Advocate. He's going to have the Nyssa fight the Thalia's Lieutenant. This means he is going to take two points of damage and fall down to two. But Handwar Militia Captain is going to die. Sylvan Advocate will live as a 3-4. And Nyssa is going to chump block that Gideon. Although it is a 5-5 five -five now, which is really relevant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think Linvala's Magical Christmas Land. He's playing two of them. I play two of them. Linvala, she's my homegirl. She's done a, a lot of work, gotten me out of some tight situations, and I would love to see her enter the battlefield here. Well, Osip does have his sixth land here, so that Advocate is now a 5-5 five five and can actually kill the Gideon, or a 5-6 and can kill the Gideon. Well, the Gideon, the Gideon has a six loyalty, so... He has five loyalty with a plus one, plus one counter. Oh, that's what the other dice was. Got it. Ah, so this is really turning yeah, around for Osip. Really big deal for Osip. And at two life, it looks like he's just barely going to stabilize. Yeah. Had David untapped his uh, Gossip Monger and saved one from a Declaration in Stone a million turns ago, mm -hmm. this, would, this game would be looking much different. Yep. All right, well, Declaration in Stone on the Inspector is going to give David a fourth clue token. So if he has three, might as well give him a fourth. Yep. And what I like about this, too, is firing off the Declaration of Stone there is a good idea. Even though Osip basically has the ground locked up, he's still got to be worried about something like a Griff Spoon. That's like the one thing that could punk him out of the game. Um, so, and it's really good to keep the Griff Spoons in post, uh, you know, uh, post sideboard because they're great protection against Dromoka's command for your always watchings. Well, David is going to cash in one of his clues. He's going to play Thraven Inspector and get another clue here. He does have three lands now, but this 5-6 uh, Sylvan Advocate on Osip's side is going to be very, very good. Yeah, and what Plays defense well, and pressures offense. well. And Osip kind of wants to get this game over with a hurry, but he also wants to find a flyer, an instant speed removal spell, and or a way to kill his hangerback walker. Uh, because he still needs to worry about a Griff Spoon punking him out of this game, and David has a lot of digging power. All right, so Osip is just going to attack for five. That's going to knock David down to 13. David's going to pick up what looked to be a fourth land. He is just going to play always watching, though. And maybe this is a setup to give him protection from a Dromoka's command if he can find a Griff Spoon in the next two or three cards. That would be a very good line of play. All right, well, well Osip has another. Just another <laughs> declaration. Here you go. Have a fifth Swing clue. Swing for eight. Put you down to five. Now this Sylvan Advocate is a lethal attacker. And despite having all these redraws, David just doesn't have enough mana to actually make use of all of them. All right, well, David's going to cash in one of his clues, find nothing, and extend the hand. Osip is going to stabilize it to life. And he is going to take this game, this match. Green-white tokens for Osip Levadovich is going to beat David Higgs on white-red humans, two to zero. Yeah, green-white always great. wins. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a great game. Both decks got to showcase their power, uh, and honestly, the the matchup basically played out the way that I'm used to it playing out.